So, so, so even though we're going to face these things, we have a promise from the Father that we'll overcome them. Even though we're going to face these things, <clears throat> we have a promise from the Father, turn to Psalms 34, that we are going to overcome them. Amen. Be of good cheer. So, so why should I be of good cheer if you've won, unless your victory does something for me? Right. Come on, come on, I, I need you to think it through. All right, all right. Uh, uh, if you tell me, hey, don't be thrown off, you know, I got paid today, unless you're going to share some of that money with me. Come on, I'm making sense to you. That's the only reason, you know, we're going out to eat, and you're like, oh, don't worry about it. I just got paid today. That means I don't have to come out of the pocket. So, so he said, be of good cheer. I'll overcome the world. I already did it. I'm going to throw you on my back and walk you through this thing. Be of good cheer. I don't know if y'all getting it right. Okay, you're facing a situation that's insurmountable. You're facing a situation where you're losing on every side. Be of good cheer. I'm going to throw you on my back. I got you covered. Am I making sense to you? You going out to eat, realize, snap, I don't have my, my ID, my wallet, or even my spare cash. Look around, and you know, I normally keep cash in my glove box, and yesterday I gave it all to my mate. Man, I don't have anything. Hey, it's all right. You rolling with me. That means I'm covered. That's right. I am straight. I can eat just like I had a pocket full of money. Right. Be of good cheer. When, when would he say that? When bad cheer is there. Right. You don't tell a person, be of good cheer, when they already got it. I'm already, I'm already smiled out. Yeah. You, could, you could see the, the, the cavities that, you know, my dentist is about to work with. I refuse to close my mouth. You don't tell me be happy then. Right. All right, right, right. Psalm, Psalms 34, you there? So there are a couple of things we have to do. We have to address the storms. We have to face the reality that they will happen. Face the reality that they will happen. Face the reality that they will happen. Come on, breathe in. Breathe out. Y'all remember that exercise just a minute ago, right? All right, very good. You do qualify. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. All right, y'all going to fail another test. All right, come on now, saints. Y'all got to get with it. All right, it's not cold in here, okay? Let's try that. All right. All right, so don't tell me, it's cold, Pastor. My mind on the cold. No, it's not cold in here. All right, so let's try it again. Psalms 34, verse 19. Are you there? Amen. All right, check and make sure your neighbor's there, too. This is an open book test. Let's make sure. Make sure your neighbor's there, too. And if they're threatening, you got, kind of give the usher a little wave, one of them little, <laughs> that little invisible finger. They, they got me scared. All right, all right, verse 19, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. All right, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to agitate you, mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of stuff that's just going to get on your nerves. I was in a season where I was really getting tired of just stuff happening, and the Spirit of the Lord reminded me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I'm going to deliver you. Stop focusing on that. Focus on me. Focus on my deliverance. Call forth my deliverance. Am I making sense to you? So, so many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us. How many of them? All. How many of them? All. <laughs> Turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. So, so, so then we have to abandon the idea that storms are designed to punish us or to make us fail. God's not trying to teach you anything. No, God's not trying to teach you anything. You all remember uh, uh, the color purple? God's trying to tell you something that, that's what, speak Lord. <laughs> that's foolishness. <laughs> that's great for a movie, horrible for your life. That's horrible for your life. So the Bible says the things that are written aforetime are for our Learning. The things that are written aforetime are for our learning. learning. The things that are written aforetime are for our learning. Experience is a teacher of fools. Mm -hmm. Experience is the teacher of fools. What did I just say? Experience is a teacher of fools. All right. So now, uh, I understand you want to challenge me on it. I got you. No problem. All right. You ever got busted in the head to the white meat with a hammer? No. no. Well, how you know it hurts? So, so if experience is the best teacher, I need to bust upside the head down to the white meat with the hammer to let you know that it hurts. You can't guarantee that it hurts unless you experience it yourself. If experience is the best teacher. It's not the best teacher. So, so, so you don't have to know that if you jump off this building from the top, you will fall and... and uh, in uh, grace will keep you alive. <laughs> Otherwise, you're crossing over. That's right. You don't need to do that to know that. Right. Come, am I making sense right. to you? 
So, so don't allow uh, uh, the enemy to, 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 to tell you that. You see, unless you have this situation, you don't have a testimony. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me I need to have rabbit dogs released on me, tear me up, <laughs> peel my flesh away, mm. and then somebody, you know, come and breathe life back into me so I could have a testimony? You lost your mind. So which one is a better testimony that I walked through the area of rabbit dogs and they couldn't touch me, oh. or I had to be revived after the rabbit dogs almost snatched my head off? I want the dude who couldn't get touched. I want to know how you walk through a toxic situation, how you walk through hateful situations, how you walk through an environment where the devil is targeting you and he can't touch you. Let me get that one. Right. I don't want to know that I can get money and I was almost, you know, I was a second away from homeless. I mean, Angie, they, they, they were taking the windows off the house, you understand? I mean, it was just bad. They were taking the doors off the hinges. <laughs> and then God came through in the midnight hour. I, I mean, I'm not mad with that one. Right. I just like the one that I went from house to house to house. I started giving away houses, and I realized I looked up one day that I was incredibly blessed. I didn't even know how blessed I was. Right, right, right. I think I like that testimony better. Yeah, right. Come on, I'm making sense to you. So, so I don't need a difficult situation to demonstrate that God is for me. I need his word to demonstrate that he's for me. And, and he won't bring a tough situation in my life to give me a testimony. 